Christ Jesus is our wisdom. As long as you try, you shall succeed. No individual can rise in life higher than the wisdom he operates in. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you are getting, get understanding. Genesis chapter 11. I'm reading verse 4. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto the heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, the business world is a very competitive world. The business arena is an arena where there is fierce warfare. The marketplace is a place where there's always trouble. People are fighting for supremacy. So if you are a businessman or you are a businesswoman or you work for an institution, the place where you work is a place of warfare. Christians want to dominate. But the non-believers, they are controlled by the enemy who also wants to dominate. We call this the Babylonian system. What I just read for you. In Genesis chapter 11, God wanted man to populate the earth. And when they started building the tower, they decided to make a name for themselves. And God confused their languages. That is what happens up to today. In the business world, people want to make a name for themselves. Companies want to perpetrate. They want to dominate. They want to be in charge. So you don't go into the business field as a Christian thinking that, oh, it's business as usual. No, there are spiritual forces fighting in that arena, but you shall be an overcomer. So you must get that before you start. That the business world is not neutral. Money is not neutral. Financial power is not neutral. Money takes the form of the person controlling it. If money falls into the hands of believers, they will use it to promote God. If money falls into the hands of the people who are in another movement, anti-God, anti-Christianity, anti-evangelism, they will use it to suppress Christianity. So God wants to empower his people to give them wealth. So if you are a businessman, see yourself to be a person doing financial warfare. God wants to prosper you. God wants to increase you. God wants to give you wealth. So when you are in the business arena, you are not fighting alone. God is on your side. God wants you to win. And if you win, you give the glory to him. I want to share with you today the four components of a successful business. The four components of a very successful business. Any person who wants to succeed in business, there are these four components you must of necessity fulfill. You have to ensure that those four components are met. Because you see, the business field is a very strong field. The business field controls everywhere it cuts across, everywhere. It cuts across politics, it cuts across religion, it cuts across education, it cuts across ethnicity. No matter what you do, business is needed there. So you see, if you are targeting business, you must understand what you are doing. You don't need to be a full-time business person to be involved in business. Every person must begin to have a business idea. You must have a business mind. No matter what you do, you can have a business idea and a business mind. So what are the four components? The first one is foundation. Foundation. 
Every business must have a foundation. Just as every building has a foundation, every business must have a foundation. You see, your foundation determines how solid your business can be. We are told that the higher the, the, the structure we want to put up, the deeper the foundation must be. So, in a building of structures or offices, the foundation supports the whole building. In the same way, in our business world, our foundation supports our business. Again, the foundation gives shape to the building. So, your foundation in business gives shape to your business. Your foundation cannot be round, then you want to put up a square building. So if you're going to start a building, find out what foundation am I putting this building on? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I read, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. So even in business, don't think that I am just doing business for myself. You must lay Christ Jesus as the foundation for your business. What do I mean? When you are going to start business, you must find out how does that business relate to Christ? How does that business relate to Christianity? Am I doing something that is contrary to what the word of God says? Or I'm doing something which is going to promote and give honor to God? Because you see, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So you can tell that the word which is foundation is what I'm talking about. Because the Bible says again in John 1.14, the word became flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. So you see, the word is Jesus. So when they say the foundation is Christ, the foundation is the word. So if you are starting business, I want to strongly encourage that look for people, men of God, or other fellow Christians, and present your business as a foundation and let God be the foundation of that business. Don't just get up and say, I'm going to look for money to do business. You may get money all right, but money doesn't start business. Don't just say, I'm going to look for business plan. I'm going to do a business plan. You do your feasibility studies, you, you do your market survey, and you do all your ratios. That doesn't start business. The business starts before all those things start. Because we don't see foundations. The foundations are buried underneath. What is the foundation of your business? What do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? Where do you want to do it? Whose permission do you have? God must be with you. And if God be with you, you will succeed in your business. That is why you need to have a solid foundation. So I've listed three things here which will serve as a foundation for your business. The first I've mentioned already is the word of God. What does that mean? It means you must speak God's word on your foundation. You must speak God's word on your business. Every day before even the business takes off, Look for appropriate scriptures. If you are going to sell water, say, my water shall become the living water. It shall be a water that will be sought after. So, as I'm speaking now, start having business ideas. You should have business ideas. The business you are going to do will start from your spirit. And that business which is going to start from your spirit will become a generational blessing. You see, the things I'm sharing with you, they are divine. They are things that we have practiced and we've seen it work. And it shall work for you also. 
Because in the things of God, truth is reproducible. Because truth doesn't change. If God can do something for one person, he can do the same thing for another person. So if you haven't had any business idea yet, it's not too late. Start asking God for business ideas. Start asking God for what you can do. Why? Because business is any activity that deploys your personal resources. Any activity that deploys your personal resources. And the aim is to create wealth. And then as you create wealth, the final purpose is to generate profit. So any one of you here, you have a resource. You start with your human resource. All you need to do is to start with a foundation. Foundations are extremely important. The word of God is the most, most, most important foundation for your establishment. Foundations also number two is prayer. Prayer must go into every business venture. If you want to succeed as a Christian businessman, I am talking about supernatural favor for business success, but the favor doesn't come when you put your hands in your folded uh, knees. No. You have to begin to work. Prayer is work. You have to pray and pray and pray for the business you are going to get yourself involved in. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. This is extremely important. And I'll use Nehemiah as an illustration. Every business attracts enemies. Every business attracts jealousies. Every business attracts people who are angry that you are doing that. In the case of Nehemiah, they were angry that he was building the walls. Can you imagine that? When the walls were bent and the city was opening, you know, when the walls are down, it means the place is open for attack. So this person is just helping to raise the wall to secure the gates or the city and somebody is angry. The moment you launch your business, people will come at you. They will. They are just waiting for you to start. They will. They will. They will try you by all standards. Some of them will come and siphon your money. They will buy. They won't pay. Some of them will come and ridicule you and discourage you. Some of them will use spiritual means. But can I assure you, through prayer, you will succeed. That is why it's important for you to invest a lot of prayer before the business starts. If you are going to do a business that will stand, you should invest a lot of prayer. I'm not talking of one month. I'm not talking of one year. Sometimes years of prayer, depending on what you really want to do. You have to invest prayer into the business you want to start. Until the business takes off, nobody has seen it. But the day it takes off, attacks will be launched at you. But by the grace of God, you would have conquered those attacks before you start. Jesus, the son of God, God himself, when he was born, the Bible says Herod was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. That's how bad it is. Why? Because they have heard that a king was being born. You see, if you are going to sell uh, maybe clothing, other clothing people will say, that, who is this coming to compete with us? They won't be happy. Even if your shop is next to another person's shop, the person will just, for no reason, will just be angry. Maybe you are even selling goods which he or she doesn't sell. But just the fact that a competitive, you know, human beings, we are selfish. True? Yes. So if you don't pray, what do you think will happen? It will be a stillborn. But if you pray, you will conquer every barrier. 
If you pray, you overcome every obstacle. If you pray, you overcome every challenge. If you pray, you will see the difficulties before they emerge. If you pray, God will even reveal some things to you and you deal with them before the time comes. The business arena is so much frightful. But if God is with you, you will overcome. God wants you to become a financier of his work. God wants you to be a promoter of the kingdom. So if you don't invest in yourself, you don't invest in business, how can you have enough to give to him? He is waiting for you to start. He will finish it for you. He's waiting for you to just initiate. He will do the inauguration. He'll come and commission it. Yes. You may not have the capital. God will give you the capital. You may not have the know-how. God will bring men. For Isaiah chapter 60 is one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to business. He will give you everything you require. Go read Isaiah 60. Right beside it, business excellence. He says, arise, shine, for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, there is gross darkness all around you. But for you, the light will shine upon you. So when there is unemployment, that's the time for you to get your employer. When there is a recession, no business is working. That's when your business will work. Every business should start with a foundation. And the three things about the foundation, number one is the word of God, number two is prayer, number three of the foundation is faith. Faith. We don't use faith only when we are sick. We don't use faith only when we need breakthroughs. We use faith when we want to embark on a business venture. Faith is calling forth things that be not as though they were. So when you are laying foundation for your business, be sure you don't say negative things into the foundation. Because when you say those things, it's part of your foundation. Oh, this business, we are going to try and see. If that's your foundation. Your foundation is what? Try and see. Oh, this business, we hear that it doesn't work, but we are also going to see how, how it will work. That's your foundation. You haven't started yet. That's your foundation. Because you see, all your information about the business is what people have said. So you don't have any other foundation. May your foundation be what the word of God has said. May your foundation be what the word of God has said. And start speaking it to yourself. Begin to say that we are going to start this business and by the grace of God, it shall stand and it shall be profitable. Faith begins the day you start your business. Start speaking faith to your business. If you have never been doing it, it's never too late. Faith begins the day you start your business. You don't do the business along the line that you want to speak faith into it. Faith must be part of the foundation of your business. Because your business shall rise according as your faith rises. Your business shall expand according as your faith expands. So if you are starting any business, don't limit the business to what you had at the beginning. God shows himself to us by progressive revelation. I decided, actually, not to talk about the physical components, about how to have a success in business. And anybody at all can Google those ones. I'm talking about spiritual things that can bring a change in your business. I'm talking about spiritual things that can transform your business environment. Do you know that many of the things we worry about, they may not be necessary if God is on your side? With God in your business, you are a majority shareholder. You see, when faith is in the business, the business takes a totally different turn. I'm going to 
take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 1. We'll look at a few things about faith as a foundation for business. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you are not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, strife, and divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? That's what happens in the business field. There's envy. There is jealousy. There are divisions. There are strifes. And that is the real business field you are going to. So how should you go? You go in the opposite spirit. We call it walking in the opposite spirit. For you to be a successful business person, operating on the foundation of faith, you must walk in the opposite spirit. If you get to a place where nobody is talking to you, you go and talk to the person. That is opposite spirit. Oh, I came here and nobody came and welcomed me. You go and announce yourself that you have arrived. Walk in the opposite spirit. Walk in the opposite spirit. When you walk in the opposite spirit, you attract divine blessings your way. For while one saith, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Are they not but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Circle the First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. You will start the business. You will start the business. Your prayers will water the business. But the increase of the business comes from the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. You will start the business. Your prayers will water the business. But the increase of the business will come from the Lord. And because of this anointing, your business shall begin to grow. Because of this anointing, your business shall begin to increase. Because of this unction, your, your business shall begin to sprout and flourish. Amen. Whenever you are dealing with business things, don't joke with the spiritual. It's extremely important. In the next verse, Paul talks about, So then, neither is he that planted anything, and neither he that watereth, but God who gives the increase. So in your business, who becomes the most important person? God. I planted, and others helped me to pray for it and watered it, but who gave the increase? God. So who is the most important person in the business? God. So when it comes to acknowledging people in my business, who should be the most important person to acknowledge? God. If I'm giving money to people for how they assist me in my business, who should I give the most important money to? God. And when you do that, the sky cannot even be your limit. Now, he that planted and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So God will not suffer me not to be rewarded. I planted it. God shall reward me. And if you are praying to other people's businesses, you shall also be rewarded. So the person who planted and the person who prays for the business shall be rewarded. Pastors, don't worry. Just pray. At the right time, you'll get your reward. Prayer warriors, don't worry. 
intercessors. Don't worry. They said that he who plants and he who waters, they shall receive his own according to his own labor. May you receive your own. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me. So you see, business takes grace. Don't look at somebody succeeding and say, oh, this one is so easy. No, it's not. People have certain graces to advance in certain levels of business. May you receive grace for another level of business. Businesses takes grace. So as you are operating in faith and you are declaring faith, those graces are coming to pass. You know, sometimes you face challenges in the business field. You face protracted retardation as if nothing is happening. You meet one challenge after the other. You start with this, this thing breaks down, you repair it, another thing breaks down, you repair it, and then it seems as if you are just putting out fires. I want to encourage you. Your grace to succeed is still there. You need patience to overcome. And after you overcome, then you become permanent in the area you have been called to. There are businesses that people give up on. But those same businesses, others started and succeeded. So, we are going to start business. Apart from this foundation that I've mentioned, there's a fourth one. It's called patience. It's part of the foundation. You need patience as part of the foundation of your business. So if I should go over number one, the word of God. Number two, prayer. Number three, faith. Number four, patience. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. In Galatians chapter five, from verse 22, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. All the other gifts of the Holy Spirit, they cannot work without patience. Patience. Faith works by patience. Love works by patience. Patience is the fruit of the Spirit. But all the other gifts, they cannot operate without patience. No business can succeed without patience. Patience. May you have enough patience for your business to take off. Let me give you my concluding remarks. That business is a spiritual field where a lot of spiritual warfare takes place. But God wants to see many Christians to start into businesses. But remember, in all this, there must be a solid foundation. If the foundation is not strong, your business will not stand. When the foundation is strong, the business will stand. The four things that make up the foundation for a successful Christian business. Number one is the word of God, which is Christ. Number two, prayer. Don't joke with prayer when you are starting business. Whether an employee or a self-employed business, it doesn't matter. Number three, faith. The language of business is faith. The language of the world is challenges and problems and difficulties. Don't speak that language. Speak the language of the Bible over your business. And number four, patience. We by faith and patience shall inherit the promises of God. Thank you for watching Treasures of Wisdom. 